So you've decided you want to wear vintage clothing more often, but isn't that going to cost you a million dollars in dry cleaning bills? Not necessarily. We're going to show you how to do it on the cheap here on the channel. Hi friends, it's Cass from Reconstructing History. So you want to wear vintage clothing more often, but you're afraid it's going to cost you a fortune in dry cleaning bills. Well, that's not necessarily true because before there was dry cleaning, people were wearing clothing made out of wool and silk and linen and those things that we send to the dry cleaner nowadays. What did they do? How did they keep their clothing clean? We're going to show you. Stay tuned. Brush it. Now we come to brushing. Brushing is a great way to keep your suits, trousers, that sort of thing, coats, um, anything, your long outerwear clean and presentable. Really what you're doing is loosening dust because that's one of the things that you really need to watch out for. Now, you can use a variety of different brushes to brush clothing. I recommend a natural bristle brush. You want something that's fairly soft. Believe it or not, a good thing to use in a pinch is a new, new, never used shoe shine buffing brush. You can get those at virtually any grocery store, something like that. Or you could get a special brush. This is one that we got from uh, Hats in the Belfry that's specifically designed for brushing clothing, hats, that sort of thing. But simply put, what you do is you take your garment, if it's whether it's a suit jacket, pair of trousers, or like this waistcoat, and you want to lay it flat on something. I'm just going to use this ironing board. And you want to make sure that it's lying absolutely flat on the surface, like this is not, because I didn't rehearse this, can you tell? And you want to make sure if it has pockets, any pocket flaps are not tucked into the inside. You want to make sure everything lies nice and flat so you can brush it on this firm surface. And then the first thing you do is you brush up the nap of the fabric. So in most materials, when they're made into uh, garments like this, are going to have the nap running down. So essentially, put your finger there, hold it in place, long, smooth strokes up the garment, like that. A couple, three times. What this does is loosens the dust in the nap of the fabric. You never want to make rubbing motions like that or go in very small patches. You always want to make a nice, long, smooth stroke. And then, after you've gone up the nap of the fabric a few times, go down to wipe the dust you've raised away. Do that whenever you pull your suits out of the closet before you put them on, and you'll look sharp. And you won't need to send them to the dry cleaners for pressing or anything like that. Simple, right? Now, you can also brush your hats with the same kind of brush. I use the same brush for everything. It's just easy. Again, you want to loosen up all of the dust that's on there, and you can just give it a pat to get everything loose. And then hold it as though you're going to put it on. This is a fedora, so you've got that pinch, and you can just put it on like that. And then just work the brush around to get off any loose dirt and dust. And for spots and stains that you may encounter, you can use Cass's blotting method that she described earlier to lift off any greasy dirt, anything like that. But just for a daily clean, before you step out of the house, give it a brush. Spray it. Now you might wonder what's in this spray bottle. It's not what you think it is. You might think it's some special chemical cleaner. It's vodka. It's very, very cheap vodka. Matter of fact, it's the cheapest vodka you can find at the liquor store. Don't buy vodka that has 
any kind of flavor in it, just buy plain, straight up vodka and the cheapest you can find. You're gonna think if you spray something with vodka, you're going to end up smelling like someone who drinks a lot of vodka. And that would be logical, but it's not true. Vodka has such a high alcohol content that the smell evaporates with the vodka very quickly. So when you spray vodka on some clothing, it evaporates almost immediately. But before it does, it takes all of the bacteria with it. Because you see, bacteria is the reason that things smell. So your sweat alone doesn't make your clothing smell. Your sweat makes your clothing smell because bacteria grows in the sweat. So if you spray the sweaty areas of your clothing with vodka, that destroys the bacteria, and then there's nothing left to smell. So if you have a garment like my winter coat here, and the inside is smelling a little manky, you just take your bottle of vodka and go to those areas that get sweated up the most, like your underarms, and give it a spray. And then leave it open so that it can dry. When that vodka evaporates, the smell will evaporate with it. And it's that simple. Spot clean it. Oftentimes, we send something to the dry cleaners because it has a spot on it. But that spot isn't something that's very hard to take out. It's just something we're a little afraid to work on because we're working on expensive wool or silk clothing. But the reality is, any spot that you can remove, you can remove. So take a cloth, damp it with water, maybe a little bit of soap, laundry detergent, very, very small amount. You don't want it to foam up. And just go with a spot with small, light strokes. Be careful not to get too heavy with your strokes, particularly if you're doing wool, because sometimes wool has a tendency to get a little fuzzy, and then you'll have a clean spot that will be fuzzier than the rest, which you don't want. So go very lightly and just keep at it until your spot goes away. It also depends on what your spot is. If your spot is something that's water soluble, a little water and a little soap will do the trick. But if your spot is something like ink, you need a spot remover. And you can buy spot remover at the supermarket or specialty cleaning supply stores for number of different things. Ink has a different kind of spot remover than grease, for example. Also, with things like grease, you can put your cloth, particularly in a very absorbent cloth, over the spot and then iron it. The grease responds to the heat in the iron, the grease adheres to the cloth, and then lifts away when you lift the cloth off. So before you go sending your specialty vintage clothes to the dry cleaner. Give it a spot clean first and see if you can do it yourself. Iron it. Ironing. If there's one thing I actually enjoy doing around the house, it's ironing. It's just, for me, it's relaxing and it's fun and I enjoy doing it. Now, ironing shirts can be an art form. There's no right or wrong way to do it, but there are ways to do it that are smarter than others. First off, identify the areas on the shirts, the shirt that you want to make sure are very nice and crisp and clean. You wanna watch these buttons, button stands down the front. They tend to fold up when they're in the wash, whether it's a uh, cotton shirt like this one or a linen shirt, they tend to fold and get all manky and you wanna make sure that isn't the case. The cuffs are important to hit. French cuffs 
take a slightly different approach than normal cuffs like this, but not really, not that different. And the collars. If your shirt has collar stay pockets in like this does, make sure you remove them because those are generally plastic. Remove them before you launder them. Pull them out, put them someplace safe like I always fail to do and lose them. So pull them out, put them someplace safe, and then when you've finished ironing, you'll put them back. You don't want to wash them on hot or in, indeed any temperature because it'll just, they'll fall out and you'll lose them. And you don't want to run the iron over them because generally these days they're plastic. If you can get some of the old fashioned metal ones, you're okay for ironing over them, but you still don't want to do it because irons, you don't want to scratch them. So to begin, make sure everything is nice and fluffy. Make sure the sleeves are out, not, you know, pulled inside out and start with the collar. Now this iron isn't on. I'm just going to run through the steps with you so you know what to do. But you want to make sure the collar is nice and flat first, going from the back side of the collar. So the outside of the shirt. Once that's, ni once that's nicely done, you want to pull, use the pointy end of your ironing board to pull it taut because this is how we do the yoke. The yoke, see this bit right here. I don't know if you can see that in the shot, but we'll give it a try. And if you pull it up, if you pull it right, the collar should stand up on its own. Thus, and that lets you get the iron in and around the yoke, which is extremely hard to do otherwise. And again, then once you've done one side, pull it over and do the other. Make sure it's flat. Do it like that. Pretty easy, huh? Next, I like to do sleeves. Your sleeves, you're generally going to have to do front and back because it's cotton. It wrinkles if you look at it. So find that seam on the inside of the sleeve. Make sure you know where that is because the opposite side of the sleeve from that is where you're going to want to put your crease. But before you do that, lay your cuffs out flat and make sure you iron those first. If you have a French cuff like this, after you've ironed the inside of the cuff, flip it over so that it's the way it'll look when you wear it and iron that as well. You may need to stick that over the end, the very tippity corner of the ironing board, maybe. Up to you, depends on how big your wrists are. But you want to lay this out, and sometimes a spray bottle works really well for you. You can use starch if you like. I don't particularly like to use it anymore. I used to like to have my shirts starched so heavily that I would actually physically have to force my arm through the sleeve, but no, I don't like to do that anymore. But anyway, you want to make sure that this seam is lying flat. And then you've got it laid out you can take your iron and just run it all the way up to the cuff. And same on this side, all the way up into all this complicated nonsense where the cuff attaches to the sleeve. And then a nice hard press, if like me, you like that knife edge pleat on the, outs on the top side of your sleeve. Then flip it over, do the other side. Be careful that you don't end up putting railroad tracks in this crease. That looks dumb. From there, I like to do the back first, pull, pulling it over the end, the pointy end of the ironing board so that you get as much surface area as possible. And the reason I do it in this order is because if, you, if I don't do it in this order, I end up crumpling areas I've already ironed. And that puts creases back into it. So you're wasting work. I found that this method is the one that lets me end up with no folds and weirdnesses while I'm trying to iron a, a part of the shirt. So yeah, you just wanna basically get as much surface area as possible. When you've ironed one bit, scooch it over a bit, iron the next bit, and then that is when I go to the front because the front 
is the last, is the bit everyone's going to see. The collar, the cuffs, and the front. And uh, getting in between the buttons is important. Even though nobody will ever see it, you still want to do it because it could have, it could have a weirdness when the, the shirt is buttoned up. And the reason I like to do this myself is because dry cleaners, and the reason you should too, is dry cleaners are notoriously bad with buttons. They will smash them, mangle them, and return a shirt to you that has, you know, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buttons. I got one back that had four of the seven missing. And they're, they're not going to replace them because they put them in a massive machine and just go pish. And, you know, it, it's just, it's hard on the fabric. So, and it's expensive for shirts. Come on, do them at home. Um, yeah, so make sure you iron in between all the buttons. And it's a good idea to start from the side seam here and work toward the buttons. Work toward where the shirt closes. In like that. Start there. That lets you work in between all the buttons too. And then last, the final thing is the side that may or may not have a pocket on it, but has the holes that the buttons go through. And again, you're just repeating. Lather, rinse, repeat. Coming from the side seam toward the button stand, making sure to give the pocket a nice firm press and a nice really firm press down the button stand to make sure it's all crisp and clean and lovely and nice. That's it. Ironing is easy. Just don't burn yourself, all right? Because that's no fun. As you know, you might have seen on my face. So there you have it, guys. That's how to save yourself a significant amount of money cleaning your vintage or vintage look stuff that you've spent a lot of money on already. No need for dry cleaners. All you need to do is a little bit of sweat, a little bit of hard work. But the cool part about it is that these are the methods they use. The people who wore this stuff first, this is what they did to keep their stuff looking fresh and clean. So we're glad we could help you figure that out and keep your vintage wardrobe looking spectacular. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please don't forget to click the thumbs up below. If you have suggestions or want to argue, please comment below. Please subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications.